techniques for obturation of the root canal objectives. The objectives of obturation are to prevent entrance of periapical exudate into the root canal space, prevent reinfection of the root canal, and create a favorable biological environment for healing. The criteria for root canal obturation, these criteria, they have to be present in the uh, root so that we can do obturation. First of all, asymptomatic tooth. The tooth should have no symptom whatsoever. No sign or fistula, no sinus tract or fistula. That means the the pathology has receded. So therefore, we ha we can do obturation. If the fistula is still there, that means we cannot uh, perform obturation. Dry canal. We have to place a paper point inside the root canal, and the root the uh, uh, paper point has to come out dry. If not, if it has any any uh, moisture or a foul odor, in this case we have to do re-instrumentation, and it is uh, helpful to have any uh, certain bacteriological culture and <coughs> it should be negative uh, result. Techniques of root canal obturation. The core carrier got a purchase system. As we can see here, we have got a core made of plastic coated by got a percha. This core is going to play to be placed in an oven, which is going to soften the gutta percha and then place it in the the <coughs> in the uh, root canal. The procedure here is that we have to ensure that the, there is a patent root canal in what we call a verifier. The root canal has to be very patent and uh, no obstruction to the uh, verifier. Then we dry the canal thoroughly with a paper point. Then we coat the uh, root canal wall with sealer and place our thermophil cone, uh, which is softened, and we took and take it uh, took it from the oven and we place it inside the root canal in one single step. This is very uh, uh, important because we are going to have a vertical uh, uh, force with a lateral force. Uh, the lateral force will, will uh, force the, the uh, sealer and the uh, uh, soft gutta percha to enter irregularities that were impossible to enter in, uh, with other techniques. After that, we separate the unneeded coronal part of the thermophil cone by um, a burr and we remove the excess. The procedure of thermophil obturation is present on YouTube and in my channel. As we can see here, very difficult anatomy like this uh, two canals joint in one and then divided into two this can be obturated by the core carrier uh, cones and uh, they are very difficult to be obturated by other types of techniques pastes there are many many pastes and uh, during the uh, last uh, uh, years, many pastes were introduced into the market to be uh, used for obturation. 
they they uh, assumed that uh, these pastes will uh, obturate difficult areas in the internal uh, as internal resorption. Really, the, there are certain disadvantages. First of all, resorption of the pastes. And as it is a paste, there is no control on the flow of the of this paste. Therefore, there may be extrusion of the paste periapically. Apical third obturation. Here we use calcium silicates, MTA, and biodentine. The apical third obturation is made. We have an open apex. Here, either we do apexification or pulp regeneration, or we may use MTA apical obturation here, and then obturating the rest of the root canal by a core carrier or any other mean or technique of gutta percha. Even if MTA gets extruded in the periapical area, it is totally biocompatible and it will not harm the area. Pulp regeneration and including revascularization. Now this is uh, quite popular because really sometimes we see uh, teeth that become uh, necrotic while still uh, the root is not in complete formation. We rely on stem cells in the periapical region. Therefore, in this case, we irrigate the, the root canal thoroughly with sodium hypochlorite and uh, distilled water. Then we uh, disinfect the area with the triple antibiotics or calcium hydroxide. The next visit, we remove the antibiotic and uh, initiate blood uh, or bleeding by uh, introducing a, a file size 15 into the periapical area, and the blood will uh, flow and fill the root canal. This blood is going to bring with it the stem cells in the periapical region. Then we place MTA sealer or seal, which is going to initiate the growth factors present with the stem cells and initiate uh, or differentiate the undifferentiated mesenchymal cells into odontoblasts and other types of cells that are going to form uh, bone uh, and, and cementum. And this is the end result, hopefully in a couple of months. Now, pulp regeneration may be treated, uh, treating uh, existing pulp, like here, when we have partial pulpitis, we remove the caries, and just like a direct pulp capping, we uh, place our stem cells therapy, and pulp regeneration hopefully is going to happen. Or we may do the traditional uh, uh, an endodontic regeneration whereby we remove the necrotic uh, tissues, clean the area, then place or initiate the bleeding and the blood clot, and then place MTA, and hopefully pulp regeneration will happen. We can see here that preoperatively we had necrotic necrotic uh, tooth with periapical involvement and we placed our MTA uh, it uh, filled around about half uh, of the root canal uh, length and after two years you can see 
uh, root lengthening and uh, the uh, periodical changes have receded.